Hi guys. So today let's talk about random variables. So let's start with an experiment of tossing a coin. Okay. So if we toss the coin once, there are two possible outcomes we can get. We can get either a head or a tail. If we toss the coin twice, then what are the possible outcomes we can get? We can get either a head head, a head tail, tail head, or a tail tail. Now, a set of all possible outcomes of a random experiment is actually called a sample space and it's donated by capital Omega, right? Now, this is a sample space by tossing the coin once and this is a sample space by tossing the coin twice and we can also likewise define another sample space by tossing the coin three times and the possible outcomes would be head, 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 tail, head, tail, head, head, tail, 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 head, head, tail, head, tail, 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 head, tail, tail, tail. Okay. Now what I would like to do is I would like to define two random variables. Let's say I would like to count the number of heads. And that random variable I'm going to denote by x and let's do another one y where I'm going to count the number of tails. Right? So if this is how you define x, the value of x here would be in this particular experiment. Here, if this is the outcome, the value of x would be 3 because there are 3 heads and we are counting the number of heads. Here the value would be 2 because there are 2 heads, again 2. Here there would be 1, 2, 1, 1 and 0, right? So we are just counting the number of heads because that's how you define the random variable to be. Likewise, let's count the number of tails. Here, value would be zero because there are no tails here. There's one tail, one tail, two, one, two, two, and three, right? So, very simple. We're just basically counting the number of uh, heads here and number of tails. Now, this is a random variable because obviously the value depends on the outcome of our three coin tosses, right? So if the, the first three coin tosses were tail, head, head, the value of x would be 2 and y would be 1. So what if, so now we can define what a random variable is. Random variable is a real valued function that assigns a outcome of our sample space and, and gives it a real value, right? So basically we can denote, um, let's denote an outcome of our experiment as omega, okay? So what we're saying is x, which is a random variable, takes on a value of omega and basically gives it a real value, right? Likewise, y is another random variable defined on the same sample space, so it's basically taking another it can take uh, you know various outcomes and basically it will assign a real value as well even though the experiment is exactly the same which is tossing the coin three times but we basically have defined two separate random variables and depending on the coin tosses they assign these coin tosses different values right so in, in our example here x basically of h h h so the outcome is h h h this function which is a random variable, basically you would assign it a value of 3. Whereas y would take the same particular outcome, but would assign it a different value of 0, right? So these are two are, basically you can think of them as real valued functions that operate on our sample space and assign different values, right? Great. Now, let's take this example a little further and let's say that, you know, let's take it, make it a little bit more domain specific. So let's say that we're conducting the same experiment. What we're going to do is we're going to take a coin, we're going to toss it twice. So what is our sample space? We can get a head head, head tail, tail head or a tail tail, right? Now let's say that there is a stock that whenever the value of the toss, a coin toss is a head, stock goes up by a factor. And if the value of the coin toss is a tail, it goes down by a, by a different factor. 
Okay, so what we're saying is we're basically starting with the stock whose value at time zero is S0. We're gonna toss the coin, and if the value is a head, the stock goes up. If the value is a tail, the stock goes down. Likewise, we can toss the coin again, and we could say it's a head, 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 tail. So again, if it's a head, stock goes up. If it's a tail, stock goes down. And likewise, S2, first was tail, and second was head, tail, tail. So these are the four possible outcomes of our experiment. And you know, we've defined, we've said that, okay, there is a, there is a stock that if the first toy coin tosses a head, it basically takes on this value. If it's a tail, it takes on this value. And likewise, if we toss a coin twice, the stock can take these, any one of these four possible values, right? Now, let's think about this example. Now, you know, if you look at, you know, the value of the stock at time one, denoted by S1, it basically is a random variable because, you know, obviously the value of S1 depends on if the coin toss is a head or a tail, right? And if the first coin toss is a head, value would be S1H. If it's a tail, it would be S1T. And it's random because we don't really know how the first coin toss is going to turn out at time zero, okay? So S1 is random. Likewise, S2 is also random because it depends on the first two coin tosses and we really don't know how the coin tosses are going to turn out at time zero. Okay, so S2, which is the value of the stock at time two, is also random. Well, S0 is a special case uh, because the t value of S0 is known at time zero and it doesn't really depend on uh, the first two coin tosses. So, so these kind of random variables, we call them degenerate, degenerate random variables. Okay, so what we've done is we basically have defined three different random variables here. This S1 depends on the first coin toss, S2 depends on two, the first two coin tosses. S0 basically is a degenerate random variable, it doesn't really depend on any coin tosses and it's not really random, okay? Because the value is known at time zero. Likewise, we could just continue this experiment, we could toss another coin and we could basically define um, a value of the stock at time three as S3 and that would be random variable as well. And likewise, we can continue the experiment to n number of, we could say, okay, we toss the coin n number of times and the value of the stock at time n would be Sn. And depends, you know, this would be random because again, it depends on the first n coin tosses, right? So that's pretty much uh, what I wanted to talk about for random variables. One thing to actually uh, observe here is when we were conducting our first experiment and you know when we were counting the number of heads or a tail we could define the random variable without really worrying about what is the probability of a head or a tail so nowhere in our uh, discussion of random variable we've actually talked about probabilities of various outcomes right because they didn't really matter uh, we just were concerned about we defined a random variable or counting heads and you know, depending on what a sample space was, we could actually define the value of the random variables as well. Okay, so probabilities didn't really matter for defining random variables. And likewise here, you know, we defined a hypothetical stock process and basically depending on if the coin toss was a head or a tail, the stock went up or, a, or came down. And we didn't really, just to define what these random variables were, we didn't really worry about what are the probability of various outcomes, right? Now probabilities are going to start mattering when we want to talk about distribution of random variables, which is a topic we're going to take on maybe in the in the next class or you know sometime later on, and that's the only time when you know we basically going to combine the random variables with their probabilities, and you know combining the two will give us distribution of the random variable. But it's a topic which we're going to discuss in the in, in um, maybe in the next class or so. Okay. So that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. Just, just remember that random variable is a function that operates on a sample space and assigns it a real number. And for defining random variable, we really don't really care about defining probabilities of those outcomes, okay? And those two concepts are pretty, pretty important to remember. Okay guys, so see you in the next class.